Many thanks for your company here on Joy News Agenda today. We focus on the thousands of mining pits left behind by Galamse miners that have not been covered in the central region. Richard Kojunyako examines the difference between the practices adopted by the Galamse miners and mining companies after the mineral, their object of interest, has been taken out of the soil. Richard reports thousands of uncovered mining pits in the central region are wreaking havoc for residents in the mining communities. I am Fridge for class of Chichere, Dunkonofin, and many other mining communities in the central region have suffered and continue to suffer from the dangers of Galamse activities. The environment has been badly battered. On the Pra and Ofen rivers, Galamse activities still go on despite a national crusade against illegal mining. <laughs> All our rivers have been destroyed. Chivupurasu got flooded because of the activities of Galamse. As I speak with you, Mr. President, there are a lot of Galamse miners still mining on the Pra River. They don't heed to our calls. We are pleading, please send some of the anti Galamse tax force to this place to deal with them. We will support them to stop such persons who are still destroying our rivers and lands. Nana Kwisikina is the paramount chief of a Timokwa traditional area. Nana looks very bitter about the Galamse activities that recently resulted in the flooding that destroyed properties worth tens of thousands of Ghana cities when the president toured the central region. Several hectares of cocoa farms and other cash and food crops were sold to Galamse miners to destroy the lands. Now the farmlands that used to feed families and increase Ghana's cocoa production are no more. In their place are large uncovered pits, millions of them that stare residents in the face. From where I stand, I can see about 15 gaping holes each having a size four times the size of a football field. These pits have been left uncovered, and the rivers such as River Pra and Ofen have been given colors. These rivers are no longer safe for drinking, as well as other household activities, and also cost the Ghana Water Company quite a fortune to process them for consumption. It looks as if there are no plans of reclaiming such lands. School children become victims. They are unable to go to school when it rains. The situation is giving residents terrible headaches. Go to their Galamse site. When they finish, they don't cover the pits. There are a lot of pits that have been left uncovered. On this stretch up to Kubikrum, one would lose count of the number of pits there. When it rains, the students are unable to go to school. Vehicles find it difficult to access some of the communities. I'm currently at Chirano Mines at Bibieni in the western region. The practice here, quite a different picture from the Galamse mining areas. All lands that were used in the mining process have been reclaimed and trees are already flourishing on the lands. Officials of the mine tell Joy News the company impacts positively on the communities that surround it. So uh, what you see here on the right side it's a tunnel waste dump. It's actually a waste rock dump, which was contoured, profiled, and topsoil. And we planted it with trees, indigenous trees, as well as uh, exotic trees. So and, and it's a waste dump. So we are envisaging that after closure, all the disturbed sites could be reclaimed to look like what you see here. Can it be used for its natural purposes? Yeah, as long as we have the, the, the trees on it, there's, there will be litter for, and that will increase the fertility of the land. There's return of fauna as well. Animals are coming back. So eventually it will look like a natural forest. Emmanuel Edu is the CEO for Eco Justice Ghana, an environmental friendly organization. This organization has been moving from one mining community to the other, championing safe environmental practices. We went to some of the small-scale mining operators' sites, and it was clear that they have also done some damages to the environment. 
you couldn't see the structures as uh, evidence in the uh, large scale mining companies. You don't see the real mitigating factors. And so we, we seek to bring to their attention the sort of existing legal and international practices that give safer mining conditions. We seek to liaise between the mine and the community. For now, people keep asking when all the destroyed lands are going to be reclaimed to be put to good use. Richard Kwejunyako, Joy News, Ayamfore. Let's stay a while on mining related issues. The special investigative team set up to get to the bottom of the killings of four men at Kwabing in the eastern region have begun interviewing locals in the area. The team was sent yesterday by the Inspector General of Police, David Asantia Pietro, to find the persons responsible for the deaths. Community members are still anxious to get to the bottom of the issue as there are suspicions that members of the anti galamsey Tax Force killed the four. Assemblyman for the area, however, tells Joe News they are willing to support the police fully in the investigation. He's been speaking to Joe News' as Maxwell Critical, who has joined us on the line with more. Good afternoon, Maxwell. Good afternoon. Babe. What's the situation on the ground with uh, regards to the police investigation? Well, uh, the, the team of uh, personnel from the homicide unit arrived in the area yesterday. Uh, they have been doing their own thing. Uh, the visitor sites, I mean, the scene and investigations are ongoing. The community are anxiously waiting to hear the perpetrators or the killers of these four gentlemen uh, last Sunday. Mm. For those of uh, the residents who are related or who are related to the two Muslims, they believe that vengeance is the law and that in the Islam religion, uh, they also believe that it is destined for a man to be born at once and die at once. So no matter the circumstances that lead to one day, so rather the person did not commit suicide, they believe that it is a call from God. So they, they don't have much problem about uh, who killed what. But they believe that if God did not permit, uh, their brothers would not have been wiped away. However, they are also expecting that if the police are able to, able to bring those uh, perpetrators to book, that would be a welcoming news. As I speak with you, they are having a memorial service for the two Muslims uh, who passed away uh, presently at the Nenem Uzongo. They were very last uh, Monday in the evening, late in the evening. And then this morning, they are having a memorial service for them. All so, right. Uh, mm. Mm -hmm. Maxwell, before you go, uh, we know that there was supposed to be a meeting between um, the Regional Security Council in the Eastern Region uh, and the anti galamsey Tax Force. It was supposed to have happened on Monday. It wasn't possible. It was rescheduled uh, for yesterday. Did it come off, Maxwell? Yeah, that meeting uh, happened yesterday. Uh, team, the team and the leader of the operation Vanga. Uh, the, the team was led by, they were led by the national commander, Colonel William of Japan. They met the regional security council yesterday. They briefed the security council on their operation so far and then informed them uh, in plain words that they don't have a hand in what happened. In fact, Colonel William of Japan disclosed to, to us after the meeting that the, his team, since they entered into the region, have not operated at night. So they cannot be connected to a crime that occurred or that happened the night. Mm. They, he also indicated that they have not operated, they have not extended their operations into the Kwabi area where the incident happened. So they don't have a hand in it. However, he, he assured people of Ghana that they are not uh, disturbed about the situation. They will continue to stay in the region and ensure that the mandate given to them by the president is achieved or executed before they leave time. And they make sure that they flash all illegal miners within the region. And they will do so in the confines of the law. So sure. that is the assurance that the, the army are giving the residents. And they also uh, commended the kind of cooperation they have enjoyed from the communities they will pray to. He said that people from the community will come to them and give them information about people who are met legally. So he applauded the community for their Appreciate. Thank you very much, Maxwell. That's all time will allow us on this issue. That was Maxwell Kudakwa, Eastern Regional 
uh, correspondent, uh, giving us some updates on that particular uh, case about the death of four men in Kwabing. We know that uh, the IGP, David Asante Apieto, has sent a team to investigate the matter. Now, a suspected robber has been killed in a mob attack during a robbery incident in the Tatale district of the northern region last night. Two community members have sustained severe wounds and are currently receiving treatment in the hospital. John Mrs. Martina Bugri joins me on the phone with more. Hello, Martina. Yes. Where exactly did this robbery take place? It happened at Zilando in the Tatale district. Uh, it's about a kilometer or two from the Tatale township itself. Um, speaking to community members, they said um, two of their colleagues were returning um, to the community when they were ambushed by three assailants, and then they, they attacked them and then butchered them, and then currently they are in the hospital. But when I spoke to the police, um, ASC Eric Akwabwa, he says the police cannot confirm that it is a robbery attack because no one has reported that it's been robbed in the community yet. And so far, they have not been able to uh, get hold of the two people who were there when the incident happened. And so they cannot um, independently say it is a robbery incident until they begin their investigation into the matter. Martina. And so we are definitely having two conflicting reports. The community members say it is a robbery incident, and the police say that they are yet to confirm whether indeed it was a robbery incident. Uh, Martina, can you just update us on the health status of these two who were injured? What I gather is that they are critically um, in serious condition because they were booted with machetes and and all, all manner of sub objects, and so they are in critical condition. That's what I gather. And uh, the deceased, has he been identified? Um, he's been identified. Community members say he's one of the robbers, but the police say they are yet to independently confirm who the person is. Mm. Uh, thank you very much for that. We'll bring you more on this particular story uh, from the northern region of Ghana. Now, the Ghana Education Service, GES, has served notice henceforth all teacher trainee graduates will take a license in exams. GES says the move is aimed at developing the sector and it applies to both trainee teachers graduating from public and private teacher training colleges. Our checks reveal the exams will take place in September. Some teacher associations have been reacting to this. My colleague Maxwell Agbagba has been speaking to the Director of Public Relations of the Ghana National Association of Teachers, Peter Korda, who says NUT is not entirely against the policy, but wants government to address some issues first before ruling it out. The news did not come to NUT as a surprise okay. because this licensing issue is not a new thing. Mm. The only thing is that we have some critical issues we want to settle with the teacher's employer. Okay. When I talk about the teacher's employer, I'm talking about the GES, Ghana Education Service. You know, it's good because if you get the teacher licensed, it makes him a professional that can be compared to other professions. You know, when you go to the medical field, they also are licensed, yeah. nurses are licensed. So it's not a new thing, mm. okay? And uh, it all springs from the Education Act. Mm. So to us, we are not surprised at all. Mm. But as I said earlier, we have certain issues. The issue of standards. Okay. When you look at, you know, some of the teachers are trained from the colleges of education and others from the universities. Mm. University of Education, Winneba, and the University of Cape Coast. They all train teachers, okay? But a critical look at the curriculum will tell you that what they are doing at the universities and what they are doing at the colleges of education are not the same. Okay. That is a problem, a challenge, mm. okay? So we've been talking about this and we want it to be standardized okay. so that what is done at the university and what is done at the colleges of education will be the same because at the end of the day, they are all going to the same classroom to teach, mm. be it at the senior high or junior high level, mm. okay? Huh. So we have an issue with that. Mm. And then we also have issues bordering on remuneration, which have not been resolved, okay? okay? All these issues we think must be resolved before mm. uh, the, the program kicks off. Mm. Stanislas Nabome is the General Secretary of NAGRAT. He has also been reacting to the news. He spoke to my colleague Daniel 
Dotsie. Our concerns have been basically the procedure, the procedure of land sensing, and then the level of consultation between the National Teaching Council, the Ghana Education Service Management, and us as teacher unions. These are concerns. As for the land sensing policy, it is a constitutional provision, and we are law abiding. We will not go against anything the Constitution prescribes. It's a legal issue. Now, on writing exams, we've heard so much. Nagrat is kicking against exams, teachers are kicking against. No, we are not against the writing of exams. We don't fear exams. But then, the legal framework says teachers should be licensed. It did not say how, the procedure by which they should be licensed. And so, if we have to be licensed, is it by interview, inspection of work? Is it by um, written exams? These are things we ought to sit down and discuss. Mm. After all, we are taking those exams. We are being licensed. But we have not been involved in this then you hear somewhere on air that you will be writing an exam. We have mm. issues with it. Now, this license... Have you been to the ministry um, to post these issues before them, particularly with the consultation and the procedure? No, it's not even the Ministry of Education that is implementing the policy. It is the National Teaching Council. And we even Which have operates a, under the ministry. Yes, and we have representation on the National Teaching Council. I think the council is made of 15. We have two teachers representing the teacher unions. But you raise the issues there, the issues are not addressed. You're watching Joe News today with me, Benis Abubedu. Still to come, Swiss Gold Global says. It has no relationship with Men's Gold after Men's Gold advertised on his website that is affiliated to the Global Gold Dealer. We have more right here. Thanks for staying here on Join News today. Switzerland based gold buying company Swiss Gold Global says it does not have any affiliation with Men's Bank or any of its affiliates in the gold business here in Ghana. The Bank of Ghana recently sent an alert to the public not to send deposits to men's gold because uh, it's not uh, registered to do so and men's gold is a sister company of men's bank men's gold stated on its website that it's affiliated to swiss gold global however john uses investigative journalist manasseh azuria when he sent an email to swiss gold global to verify if indeed the company has any affiliation with men's gold or men's bank he joins us in the studio with the details of his uh, the reply he got welcome manasseh Thank you. All right. So tell me exactly what was the reply from Swiss Gold Global? Well, the reply is that they were contacted by Men's Bank when Men's Bank was starting and that they expressed interest in their affiliation program because they are a global brand and they have other affiliates across the world. But beyond that, nothing actually happened. So they say they have not got any affiliation with any uh, bank, Men's Bank or Men's Gold in Ghana. They have not bought any precious metals from them. Neither has uh, men's gold bought any precious metals from them. That they don't deal in any kind of vault storage services. No form of transaction takes place between them and then men's gold. And that they cannot negate or say whether what men's gold is doing is right or wrong. But they're simply not affiliated. Not affiliated. But did you contact men's gold? Because apparently they've uh, you know, advertised this on their website. Yes, I contacted them as of last week, Friday, when I went to their website. The website was mensbankgana.gh.com. I went to that same website yesterday. The website was down. And when I called them, they said they had now migrated to a new website, mensgold.com. I went to that same website and saw this uh, information on the website that they are still affiliated. So I called one of the officials, and he initially wanted to turn down or told me he would call back. But I insisted that I just wanted some confirmation. So he said uh, he is not 
replying or giving me this information on an official uh, uh, basis or point of view, but he could tell me that there was no such affiliation and that there were certain attempts in the past. And he even sent me a video of someone purportedly from Mainz, sorry, Swiss, Swiss Gold, Gold Global, Gold. making some pronouncement to the effect that they would partner with them and all of that. But he, the one in Ghana here, one of the managers, actually told me there is no such affiliation. So I asked, why then did they have to put it on their website since it could enhance their credibility and convince people to deal with them? And he agreed that, yes, what was there uh, could uh, actually do what I was suggesting. Mm. But going forward, they would take steps to delete it because they felt that... It's actually deception. Yes, he said the IT department should have done something, but they would delete it. So just this afternoon, I went back to the website, uh, mensgold.com, and true to their word, they have taken that portion that suggests that they have an affiliation with Swiss Gold Global. It's no longer on their website as sure. we speak. Right. Thank you very much, Manasseh Azore Awune, for that turn. Uh, obviously, you'd always get Manasseh to do that. Away from Men's Gold Saga, the Health Ministry has set up a monitoring system that will ensure the smooth running of the nursing quota policy. The sector minister, Kwekwa Jaman Min, who addressed a media briefing in the central region a while ago, justified the reintroduction of the policy. He says the setup of the monitoring system will help track persons who intend to abuse the system. He cautioned health officials and prospective nursing students against the payment of bribe to gain admission to any of the nursing training institutions, as anyone found culpable will be sacked. A critical look at the quota this year has been based on the planned HR policy and will therefore not affect availability of nurses in our health facilities. These steps are also being taken to have the appropriate skill mix that will meet WHO's requirement that will on time ultimately result in an enhanced service delivery and better outcomes in Ghana. We wish to assure Ghanaians as a ministry that the quota system is not a one-time event, but a process. As we move forward as a nation, based on our yearly analysis or assessments and planning, some years may see increases in quota in certain professional course areas, while others may decline, all in an attempt to ensure that as a nation, we have the requisite scale mix in right numbers of all health professionals in all our hospitals. As we speak, interviews are ongoing to admit students into the various health training institutions. Afterwards, reports were submitted to the Ministry for study. Where it is found out that some institutions still have room to take in few more that will be considered. Let me at this stage sign a note of caution that the Minister of Health will not entertain a situation where some students are enrolled based on payment of bribes. We have set up investigations machinery trying to uncover any such incidents. Anybody caught in this act will be dealt with ruthlessly. Any student caught to have admission upon paying any money will be sacked. And officers who might have facilitated the practice will also be sanctioned appropriately. Away from nursing training issues, labor consultant Senor Jabeng has advised all workers to ensure that they are prepared for the possibility of being laid off and to make the necessary arrangements so they are treated fairly when that occurs. He cautions workers to therefore organize themselves into a union or at least have an expert representation on standby for negotiations in the event of layoffs such as what is expected in the defunct UT and capital banks. GCB Bank has already sacked two former top UT bank managers and have placed some others on probation. Up to 40% of the staff of the two collapsed banks are in danger of losing their jobs in the takeover. Speaking on Joe News Desk earlier, Senua Jabing tells us the lessons to learn from this occurrence. Employees are supposed to um, be made aware of or ensure that they are aware of these um, job risks and therefore know what their rights are 
and should be able to assert their rights accordingly. They have to ensure that they get representation. And representation can be by unionization, um, enterprise-based um, um, arrangements, or even with independent consultants and, and, and legal persons who can represent their interests um, with the employer. For employers, it's important to note that um, anything can happen uh, in the course of running a business. And so um, sometimes employees will have to be laid off. And so some funds may have to always be set aside to make to, to cater for such unforeseen circumstances. This is John News today with me, Benis Abubedo. <laughs>